Hey everybody, Sebastian here with another Watcher of Realms video. In this one, we're going to be talking about some patch notes that just came out. Uh, let me go through through some of these really quick. I'm going to go to the other because uh, then we can uh, really cover the other two. I have not really released a video yet, at least in my channel, regarding the exclusive artifacts that have been released. I will do that later on. We'll talk about those. Uh, the But I did cover them with Arturo and Wars going on. Feel free to go watch that episode if you want. We kind of talk about the bonuses that some of these artifacts are given, given that they're faction specific or hero specific. And I, we kind of give our thoughts as to how it really is going to change the game. So for that video, uh, for that content, I would say go look at the video and then just keep an eye on the one that is coming out here in the future. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on there. But because of that, because they're adding more gear to the game, they're going to increase the capacity of our gear space. So we're going for 1500 to 1700. Of course, this is these are the numbers as you get your Hyperion level, then you get your storyline stuff completed, you get extra bonus spaces. But if you're still at the beginning, you still only have 1100 you're going to go to 1300 but eventually down as you work yourself up now you're going to have up to 1700 pieces available the daily quest so this is something that i noticed here is that now we are going to get it down uh in terms of one we're losing one successfully enhanced gear three times i don't know if people were complaining about this but it didn't really take a whole lot of gold maybe it was the fact that maybe it, it was leading to some people keeping some extra pieces so they could do this i don't know either way it's it's gone and then they adjusted the quest obtain three pieces of gear from gear raid to obtain one piece so you only need to do one run i think that they're just probably trying to save you a little bit on stamina uh, usage so that's one of the things let me quickly just go over here into the quest guidelines because I want, so you can kind of see here for me, it says obtain three pieces of gear from gear raid. But the, the thing is that we, I always have either one or two left and we can claim our 10 out of 10 based on the other ones that we do, right? So my idea here is that I guess what was completed here uh, that I usually don't do is the one that says do arena one time. So I think in this situation, I may have run Arena and that completed part of the quest. But if you imagine then this being taken out, we are now only have 11 to do. So in order to get to the 10th, you're going to have to do the Arena. Unless they add another one that I'm not seeing here. Because that's these are exactly the 10 that I've done for this round here. So what I'm thinking is that that's exactly maybe that what they want to do is that given what they are going to be releasing here and the fact that they're trying to entice people to do arena that's what they're going to uh, direct you to to make sure that at least you do one battle the third one here is that they added a rewatch function for the guild war replays uh, i mean we, we could already rewatch re them so i'm curious to see how exactly they improved on this but they also say they improve the, the the replay loading screen. However, to make this faster, the better. But they say that they added the rewatch function for gear wall replays. The one thing that I do really want to make sure that they fix here quickly is the ability to restart or replay uh, the friendly battles. Because for some reason, they took that out. And now you have to click out of it and then go back in. If you want to redo your friendlies uh, with anyone that you're practicing defenses with, but they, I do hope that they eventually do fix that. But they added a rewatch function for Guild War replays. We kind of already have this, so maybe they're just making it easier so you can just go through the whole thing a little bit quicker. They said that they added mail notifications for a member of the defense positions is changed in Guild War. Okay, I don't know if this is going to be mostly for the uh the leaders and the vice leaders but i hope that this does not get annoying maybe i don't know i think maybe they're trying to entice people to go go into friendless and, and get this they're calling this an unpolished legendary soulstone it says it's a is a random drop pool of legendary and mystic sheds in drake chasm's nightmare 3 and the fine epic legendary and mythic chest 
in Nightmare 4. Okay, so apparently uh, this item here can be used to awaken any non-lore legendary hero. Again, when stuff like this comes into play, this is where my little antenna goes up. And I start to think, hopefully they did not nerf the drop rate of the legendary soul stone that we know of right now because it's already incredibly low some people are only averaging one a year some get lucky and get two but if the drop rate of that decreases because they're adding this one because you then cannot use it on a, on a, on a lord ugh, that ugh, doesn't sound favorable to me they added a Divine Justice, the exclusive artifact for Lady Alexandra, to the exclusive forge. So when that update goes, rolls out, we'll see that uh, come into play. All right. Uh, let's talk about the hero buff. Uh, it's Anora. They're going to change her ultimate. So previously, Labor uh, was immediately dealing damage up to 10 enemies. The ultimate uh, Labor gained 110, 120, 130, 150, 150 damage based on the skill ups. Increase uh, damage for 20 seconds. Skill cost was 1,000 up to 900. And level 5, you can get this down, down to level 9. So the way that they are going to buff this is that when the ultimate is activated, it will increase Labor's attack range and will decrease the cost needed to get your uh, ultimate back up to 800 if you have a full skill. So that's a little bit of a change. I imagine that this had to do with the previous modification that was done in the previous patch notes or in the previous update where they had to slightly modify the summons because they were doing a little bit of extra damage. So Labor was doing a little bit of extra damage. So they said, okay, let's try to compensate that a little so the hero does not seem to be too underwhelming. So it, it should be okay, at least for Anora. Or not, Anora's already doing her job in terms of increasing the damage of other summons uh, from other heroes. So I, I guess I guess they just wanted to make sure that they brought up her summon uh, to do just as equivalent as the others can do. At Awaken 3, though, if you did get your Anora to Awaken 3... Uh, Labor now ignores 20% of the enemy's magic resistance. All right, let's talk about the big thing. This is what's going to come uh, to the Forerunners, so we're going to get a chance to toy around with this. There is the one caveat, though, so this is not going to be for everybody. I'm assuming because they want to make sure that you uh, do have a, a develop account to make sure that you can uh, be competitive in, in this new mode, or, or they're just trying it out for now. Uh, to make sure, you know, that players that are just starting don't get too overwhelmed by it. Maybe this will change later. But they're going to bring out real-time arena. This is happening. They are going to require you, though, to clear stage 18 of gear raid 1, 2, and 3 before this content becomes available to you. It kind of does make sense because you, do, you, you should have the gear uh, for you to be able to do some of this. So right now, the setup, it looks to be that two players are going to be matched in real time and engage in the live battle, just as you would with any other game. You probably just click the button. There'll be some uh, type of matchmaking system that then occurs. It says here that, similar to Arena, the Honor's Gauntlet has three types of challenges. So I guess it would be air, single target, AOE, I don't know, something. We'll, we'll figure it out when they roll this out. The two players are matched they will randomly enter one of the challenges so it won't be like for two two days you're going to have aoe two days is going to be anti-air two days is going to be single they call it a week no this is going to be randomized which i do appreciate the fact that at least they're doing that because then you don't really go in with a mentality of oh it's anti-air i have an advantage here i'm gonna go for it if that is where your account is the strongest, that's where you're going to hit real-time arena, right? In this regard, it's just going to say, no, nope, it's going to be random. So you better get ready for each one of them. They added a new team composition rule that says when selecting heroes for your teams, you cannot use the same hero in more than one team. I like this. This, this is how it should be. So this is kind of already banned phase one, right? So as soon as you pick a hero, 
your opponent should not be able to pick up the same one. It adds a little bit more variety to the composition. It actually makes you think about forming your composition. So I like this aspect of this. The other thing, and this also takes away the whole dupe thing, right? So you cannot use dupes and, and that uh, I, I, this, this doesn't get too whaley then uh, in that regard. So epics are going to come into play for this, I think, in that regard. So it's, it's it they're trying to at least making the effort to make it a little bit different from what classic arena is like and if you know how i feel about classic arena it is something that i avoid so i hope that this improves a little things a little bit in terms of arena they added a new commander skill system. The players can add a commander skill when editing their lineup, which can effectively disrupt the opponent in battle. I'm curious as to what these commander skills are going to be. Hopefully, there isn't one that is overpowered over the other. But this is going to be the fun system here, is what skill do you assign to your lineup to be disruptive? This is what we're really looking forward to. This is one of the recommendations that we made, especially uh, those of us that were talking about how you can make variety in terms of arena. Something like this is what we were looking forward to. So hopefully it's not, something doesn't jump out that is going to be too overpowered. So we'll figure that out when that rolls out. During the match, the player who wins each round will be rewarded with a bonus cost. So... If you are able to bring that first wave down quicker than your opponent, you get additional cuts. You can bring in more heroes in to the battlefield a little bit quicker. So I think that this will maybe reward those that don't use Sirene at, right at the beginning, for example. So then it forces you to try to catch up there at the end. We'll see what kind of strategies come out of this. I think that that's what probably they were trying to eliminate with that. Then the losing player's base will continue to lose HP. This is just like Classic Arena. But then the remaining monsters of the round will also be strengthened. So I'm curious to see if things all come out at the same time. And then you have to eliminate the one wave. Or is it going to be like Classic Arena where you get wave one, you get rid of it, wave two, and then so on and so on. Within that each round, right? Hopefully in this one, it's just maybe everything comes out. Everything has the different mechanics that they introduced. They said they were going to do introduce invisibility and other stuff in the previous patch notes. So in this one, it's just going to be, if I get beaten, now I have to get content with the monsters that I have left. But they are going to be even a little bit more overpowered. This is going to really, I think, entice people to bring in units very early on, especially those that can do a lot of damage early on. The compositions will change a little bit, I think. That that's, that's essentially what they're trying to drive here. In the comment section below, let me know what you think about this system as it is set up. Do you think that it might be tilting too much to a particular set of heroes? Or do you think it will add variety to it? As this becomes available, we'll toy around with it and see exactly what it's going to do. It just for the curiosity of it i may do a couple of battles just to see what it's about and then bring that to you but i'm hoping that it at least adds a little bit more variety in terms of what heroes you can bring in and also eliminates this whole cheesing thing of trying to disrupt everything right at the spawn point and actually make you think about how you're going to think six, uh, set things up. Especially after your opponent starts selecting heroes and eliminate some of those in your roster. So this is going to be really interesting in that regard. All right, folks, that'll do it for Forerunner News. Do keep an eye for the next set of videos, especially as it uh, pertains to the exclusive gear. Because there is a special announcement there in that regard. And uh, again... On your way out, do please hit like and subscribe. It does help the channel. I do appreciate all your support. I will see you on the next Watch Our Realms video.